For 800 years old, you look fantastic. <laughs> Thank you. I hope I can remain this way. <laughs> <laughs> what a great role, though, and, and your feature film debut here in the U.S. Yes, it's my first feature film debut. First time in Hollywood. Um, first time having to speak English in an interview. It's pretty crazy. Well, yeah, you, you speak better English than I do. This is no. this, that's frustrating. <laughs> you, you should try to speak Mandarin a little bit. I don't think I could. <laughs> yeah, <ni hao. laughs> What is the difference between working in, in your country and, and here? Is there a big difference? Um, I, I would say maybe just a big culture difference, you know, just from working over here and then in Asia. Um, um, but pretty much similar, you know, the, the working, um, the ways and the camera ways and, you know, the lighting, it's all pretty similar. And um, I guess due to the space, I guess the, the, the sets here in, 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 in the studios are much more bigger and wider and, and um, it's just huge here. And maybe in Asia it's big as well, but it, it, we're a little bit behind. But you know, we're still climbing and still learning a lot of things from, um, from Hollywood as well. So it's, it's interesting to see you know, the way it works over here and the way it works over there. So I get a little bit of both. It's pretty that's, cool. That's great. And yeah. to start off with a movie this big is pretty incredible. Yeah, it's pretty incredible, yeah. Describe your role for everyone. Well, I play uh, Magnus Bang in The Modern Instruments. He is uh, half demon, half human. He's 800 years old. Uh, he loves to party. He throws all these downwillers parties for, for, you know, the the world be that's beneath us that we don't even see. So it's pretty cool to 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 bring this character out in real life and to put it on big screen, it's, it's amazing. And uh, you know, he, he has all these makeup on, he has all these glitter and nail polish and all these eyeliner, eyeshadows. So he's a pretty, uh, he's an interesting guy and uh, he's a fan favorite. So I'm just really honored and lucky to, um, to, to partake this film and this project. I was gonna say that, that yeah. playing a guy like this, this is the man you wanna play in this movie. Exactly, <laughs> he's a lot of fun and you know, I've enjoyed myself um, uh, you know, during shooting and then um, you know, just by getting all these fans from just one casting is pretty crazy because the movie's not even out yet and there's so many anticipation about this movie and a lot of people that support it, it's, it's overwhelming. It's good to have a director, <coughs> excuse me, who really wanted to do the job. It sounds like as soon as he found out about this project, he dropped everything and wanted to do this. Yeah, I mean, it was a great pleasure to work with Harold and he's a great guy and uh, he's really nice on set as well. That's, that's one of the, uh, the, the point that hit me the most. It was like all directors in Asia are pretty straightforward, mean and like, like yelling and Harold is a really nice guy on set and uh, he has all these ideas and all these thoughts about you know just scenes and movies and putting all these characters together and relate themselves and then even um, he wants to use real like real actors fighting so it was like it was pretty cool so I didn't get to fight anything but Hopefully I can do that in the in the second and third film or something like that. See, I wouldn't want to fight. I'd rather be the guy throwing the parties <laughs> like your character parties, yeah. does. That, that was my job in the first movie, and uh, I thought it was pretty cool, yeah. It is amazing, though, when a project has that fan base, like you said. Yeah. That, that you know, you can almost guarantee that it's going to work, and, the, and this will turn into a franchise. Yeah, I mean, it's... I mean, when I first heard about the Mortar Instruments, I, I honestly, I didn't know much about it, but just after reading the, the books and um, just, it, it just kept me uh, going because I want to know what happens next and you know what, what happens next after that with this person and this person and how they relate. So it, it definitely is, a, is an eye catcher for me and I, and I became a fan of the novel and Cassandra Clare is, is great. She's brilliant and the novel is doing so well and uh, I'm just happy for her and you know the whole project. Last question, there's some amazing clothes you wear in this film. Did you get to keep anything? <laughs> um, yes, my own underwear. <laughs> no, because um, I have two wardrobes in, in, the, in the first film. And uh, at first, um, Harold really wanted something different, you know, because um, I had an outfit with like a, a, a warlock outfit, like all black and pretty dark and mysterious. I have another outfit for the party. It was like purple velvet blazer, dress shirt, accessories, chains, you know, nail polish, all that stuff. And then dress shoes, long socks, and then I have just my underwear on. 
And uh, <laughs> Harold was like, um, yeah, um, what, are you, what are you wearing today? Because all those boxers and briefs that they given us to choose, they look too much like an outfit, you know? I, he wanted something more real and more shocking. And then he was like, what are you wearing today? I was like, just a, some gray brown briefs. And he's like, oh, why don't you try them on and let us see? I was like, okay. <laughs> so I took my pants off and then he's like, yep, let's use that one. So I still have the underwear <laughs> that I, I use for, for the scene. So uh, that's the only thing I kept. Well, you'll sell that for a fortune someday. <laughs> thank you. I know, thank Pleasure. you very much.